been alarming. What's been alarming to me is I, all the yeah the the, the 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 tragedy and the protests is alarming. But what's been really getting me now is the amount of friends that I have that you see their true colors during oh, yeah. the process. Yeah. And that is scary because oh, yeah. I've I've been around certain people of friends of mine who I call a friend, right? And then during this whole process, they are nowhere to be found. And then when they post something, it's not even, they're just copy and paste from somebody right, else's. Right, exactly. And yeah, easy, right? yeah. And it's like, I've been checking them and I'm just like, yo, next time, like we're not gonna be the way we are used to be. It's All of that's dead, it's you know, we'll be acquaintances. So I called out on Twitter and Benny, Benny A. Mandy, I called out all the coaches in, in the Valley. Oh, wow. Yeah, called them all out. Like, I ain't say no name specifically, but I was like, you in this Valley, you ain't said nothing, you dead wrong. There's a lot of them follow me now. And I follow a lot of them, a lot of them follow me, so a lot of their friends follow me, so, you know, they seen it. And if after that, the motherfuckers start posting little shit, or they didn't say shit. Right. But I think it's just, you know, your silence is louder than anything you could possibly do at this point. Yeah. Right? It, social media is our platform. That's how we speak to each other now. That's how people see how we feel. So you gotta open your mouth and say something. You gotta put your fingers on that motherfucking screen and, and put out some other characters mm -hmm. so that your kids know. Yeah. Your kids, and now you, you, you coach some black, white, and other now. Mm -hmm. I, I know for a fact as a parent, if motherfuckers that, that coach my kid didn't say shit about social injustice, yeah. now we ain't dealing with that, and ain't no race here, it's one color, whatever the color of our school is. You you transferring dog? You not finna yeah. sit with this motherfucker? Yeah, yeah. He, got bad, he, he, you know, he he might not have bad intention. Mm -hmm. His intentions ain't as good as it is for this other motherfucker, and I don't want right. it. Right. So I call their ass out. I let them know, and yeah. I know a lot of them personally too. And I don't give a fuck how they feel. That's some weird ass shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You showed the true colors. I was reading some uh today about this Iowa University of Iowa, and how a lot of cats that were playing there start speaking out about all the injustice and the prejudice and the, and the racism that was going on in that organization. Not the team, in the organization. Yeah. That shit is real. So I'm I'm urging everybody to speak up. Right. right? Yeah. The only way we're going to change this shit, the only way we're, motherfuckers got to get called out. Mm -hmm. You doing wrong, motherfucker, we need to know about it. They need to be put on the spot. Because what you going to do then? Show your true colors. Drew Brees. Huh. So we ain't got there yet. Yeah, we'll, we'll get we'll get into that. And JB huh. a point where in, in the coaching culture, we'll start that shit. Right in the, in the, in the coaching culture, that's very true. It's a very kind of an unspoken thing. It's not really it's not really talked about. And a lot of coaches and people involved in the football community can tend to sidestep issues like that. But we'll, we'll get into that. Chad, yeah. you you said a couple key things that that brings me to. Um, uh, our next thing to ask you about sure. you mentioned losing followers you mentioned checking your friends and I gotta be honest with you like being your friend for over 10 years yeah. I know I know when you're mad and yeah. I know when like <laughs> you, like you're really like into something yeah. and of course this 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 issue is inherently personal to you because you're you're a black man and you illustrated yeah. in the video about how you've been mistreated by police oh but yeah you put out a video that's been getting quite a bit of traction on your Instagram where yeah. you really spoke from the heart and you you said, hey, if you don't dig what I'm saying, uh, you can unfollow me. It's all right. What was your what was your kind of headspace when you made that video and what were you kind of hoping to achieve when you made when you made a video that normally knowing you, you wouldn't make something like that? Yeah, no, I wouldn't, because I'm not, uh, I'm a private guy. I don't like to put myself or my family out there. So I just kind of wanted, I didn't, I I was going back and forth on putting it out or not. But like JP said, your silence is powerful, right? And we're making history right now. 20 years from now, kids are going to go back and flip the pages. And it's going to come to this moment, right? So I, I, for a whole, like probably about four days, I was trying to figure out what to say, what to write, because I know I'm going to offend someone or they're going to unfollow me or, you know, it's just going to create this whole ordeal. I don't have a million followers, so I know it's not going to damage me too much, right? But after a while, I was seeing the, the longer video of George Floyd. And then right after that, I think MSNBC did Aubrey. And then after that, it was CNN doing Breonna Taylor that I just kind of was fed up. And so I just came and, you know, I had to put the video out too, because I, I didn't see anyone, I didn't see a lot of people putting out stories of how us black men go from day to day. Right. You know, I because 
when we when black men when we talk about stuff like that, it comes across as we're complaining. Right. We're not complaining. We're we're just concerned. And we're not mad, we're fucking furious. So it's just that I had to explain it to people because I, I kept getting text messages about or seen on Twitter about well what do what was the led up to that incident? What was that black person doing that got him in trouble? So I'm like, all right, let me explain it to you right. on how and it was very hard to say that because uh, to explain it because you know, like I guess I'm private, man. I wanna know when people know that I've been in handcuffs more than seven times for stuff right. that I didn't even do for 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 things that didn't even bought, like, happen to me. So putting it out was was very emotional, but I had to explain it to the people that in my headspace that you got to understand, man. When when I'm I'm this skin tone, I am dark skin. So everywhere I go, every minute, every day of my life, you get side eyed or you get treated differently. And I just wanted to explain that to people who did not get it, because I have a lot of friends of all different races who never knew that about me and never knew the the experiences I went through. So I even have cop friends who didn't even know that about me. So I had to put that out there so that people can stop saying that black people are complaining or it's always about black people. No, this is why we're in the systemic issue, you know, as a black African-American man. You know, I'd rather, you know what's funny is that, you know, as I was making that, I had a lot to say in that video that I could have said, but I kept I kept a little short. But it, it's like, if, I, if me and Ben are standing on the curb, I'm more safe than if I'm standing with a black friend on the curb. Right. I, mean, I feel more safe because if two of us are standing there, you, you already know what's going to happen, you know? And if I'm standing with a, with a, with a white friend, I know I'm going to be cool. And that's a feeling I've had since I was 15 years old. So, you know, it, I had to put that out for so that the number one, the number one fundamental thing, reason why I put that out, so that my son can come back to this years from now and be like, well, my dad said this speech. He came out and said something, and I didn't just hide behind my, my keyboard. Yeah, and, and the irony of that is when when you when you mentioned the when you mentioned the Burbank incident, your your man, the Blue Dini, was driving the hottest car in L.A. County. I honestly, real shit. I probably should have went to jail. I mean, the car I was driving, I probably should have went to jail.